That's definitely the card. Yeah, Franco Mob Boss is what came to the party. So that uh, with Goblin Chieftain that was brought out for free, the Mob Boss came down. It was awesome. We have another match. We I heard they were resolving a judge call. That was our delay. But uh, we're back in it now. Alex Krennic on Bug and Joseph Gebhardt playing Merfolk. It uh, looks like, yep, we've got a Lord of Atlantis on the field. That's not what Alex wants to see. Uh, Bug has traditionally been preyed upon by Merfolk decks. I know uh, when Jerry made his double win in Pittsburgh back in 2011, he did it with Bug and was mystified as to the wins he was able to get against Merfolk. Well, I mean, you have to play Merfolk right in order to make it happen. Yep, that's definitely true. I mean, if you make little mistakes like putting Brainstorm in your Merfolk deck, <laughs> I mean, it seems like a great idea. It's a great card. But often, it just feels like you just never have enough time to do uh, it. Tarmogoyf is awkwardly a very important card for Bug Against Merfolk because you have to be able to actually clock them because you can't block. However, post-board, they can frequently access answers like Submerge, which aren't even that great against your deck, but are just so great against what you, against what you might be trying to do. Uh, it gets really awkward. And this is game three. And it looks like Master of the Pearl Trident. This is getting real aggressive real quick. Another Mishra's Factory, that means we can animate and attack with Error Body. This is interesting, he's got Mishra's but no Mutavolts in this list. No Mutavolts? I, I, I'm i gonna have to come out and say that that's a budget list. Like that, I feel like that can be the only real reason to not run Mutavolt. It is a very powerful card in this archetype. I mean, if I'm reading this correctly, there there aren't any. Maybe did he not? Did he put him under the Merfolk? Maybe no. I'm looking. Uh, yeah, that's bizarre. Well, we got in for six here. That looks As like. Expected. Alex Krennic running Engineer Explosives, which we discussed at length in the last match. It looks like it's going to be pretty good here. Boom! Right? No? Yeah. Does it work? Does it resolve? He has engineered some very specific explosives for the situation. Two Sunburst, let's get a die. No? <laughs> you know, Sunburst is uh, most frequently played on engineering explosives. You don't usually need dice to mark it because this card does not sit in play for very long. It looks like Alex is explaining exactly how Sunburst is going to function with this particular card. He is going to end up burning his Tarmogoyf. It's kind of awkward since he played the Tarmogoyf last turn, right? Uh, I don't think he can afford. I don't think he can afford to not blow it. There's the debate that you could Ghastly Demise, but yeah. And um, boom, boom, boom goes the table. It's a two for two, and there are still Mishra Sackeries hanging out for Joe Gebhardt here. You know, I think I would have swung with the Tarmogoyf before doing any of this. Just bluff the ability to perhaps change what the graveyard looks like. It's free value, right? You know, you just send it in. A word from uh, the floor. Jeff Hoogland with Dead Guy Ale defeats Merfolk. He'll be joining a Storm deck, an Elf deck, a Blue-White Miracle Blade deck, and a Belcher deck in the top eight. Well, that's a very diverse top eight so far. Coral Helm Commander, and a lot of mana. Yeah, uh, I imagine we'll just send in some factories this turn. Right. Get the damage in now. I know some people in the chat are talking about Factory over Mutavolt, and uh, in fact, Factories often run alongside Mutavolt. Normally, yeah. you run like four Mutavolt, one, maybe two Factories. Okay, if case. that if that's being killed, I think there might be a deck reg error. Um, we talked earlier how there was a conversation um, about mm -hmm. Joe's list. I think there's a deck reg error. I think he just did not write the Mutavolts down on his initial list. Oh, really? Well, yeah, I'll, I'll just do a, a quick check on that. Uh, he has 60 cards registered. Like, it counts up to 60, so I, I imagine they held him to his list. I mean, technically you fixed to meet the list, but it'd be hard to, for him to have ever been caught. You know? I like, mean, uh, the judge a Ghastly him? Demise just killed one of Joe's lands, so I'm not sure what else it would have been. Oh, he killed a Mishra's Factory. That was, a, was that an Alt Art Mishra's yes, Factory? Yes, it was the oh, I don't, Elspeth versus Tezzeret Mishra's I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know that Mishra's Factory art. Got yeah. it, got it, got it, got it. Elspeth versus Tezzeret Mishra's Factory. I didn't. Um, I did not know that art. I'm used to these classic Mishra's factories. Yeah, everyone's very familiar with the Autumn Mishra's factory, of course. <laughs> Definitely the uh, most available one. Alex indicates. Yeah, come on, bring it. 
And Ghastly Demise coming back to yeah. the party. I imagine we're going to be blocking and Ghastly Demising here. Uh, getting rid of all these man lands seems very much in line with Alex's game plan here. Right, he's taking care of the Coral Merfolk, blocking a Mistress Factory. And it's awkward to trade because you do need to generate a clock. Like, your opponent's drawing to creatures, they'll find them before you, you need to clock them, but... Uh, and Alex down to one card. I think it's a land. I'll see in a moment, I'm sure. Uh, it looks like a Spell Pierce in a land, I think. That was real fast, but I think that's what I saw. Ooh, I think I was right. Come on in, Mistress Factory. Yeah. Just sending in that factory, clocking down. Wasteland takes care of the factory. Wow. At Joe suddenly out of gas. Yeah, but he doesn't have to peel much. Even a curse catcher is a very real threat. One, two mana. He has two in his hand. Coral Merfolk, maybe? Coral, coral Merfolk. That's the coral, yeah, the coral Commander, not Coral Merfolk. And level, level. And we're leaving one up, it looks like. And does he have a card in his hand? Uh, I, I imagine he has one card, and it must be Spell Pierce. What, what else are we doing, you know? That would make sense. Dark Confidant is not going to do it. Looks like Alex is packing here. And... Yep, he's thinking it over. Well, uh, that's a 3-3, three, three and, and now I'm at 3. Well, that's not good. One of the natural <laughs> reasons that Merfolk tends to beat up on slightly more controlling decks, aggro control in its role versus a controlling deck is the most lopsided matchup. It can go the other way, but usually it's because you force the other player to not be an aggro control deck. Volcanic Fall is one of those kinds of cards that helps you do that. Bug does not have access to that kind of card. Yeah. Dark Confidant. He's going to play the Confidant, hope that... Bob Maher's intimidating presence sways Coral Home Commander from the red zone. Yeah. I have a feeling it's not going to work. We're going to level level just for funsies. Why stop at four? Why, keep, why not keep going? Joe Gebhardt, also in our top eight now, yeah. defeating this, uh, this not exactly bug control deck, but uh, maybe it's, maybe it's more, yeah, it, it's Bug Delver, one of the, some, some of the aggro control models. You know, the most interesting, actually, Bug Delver deck I've seen recently, uh, Alex Hatfield played.